Okay, my wonderful friends, Roger once again, and as I do it, I start from the back and come forward. Here is the end result, is I believe, and this is just my, my guess at the moment, I need it to be looked at by people that have more expertise than me, but I see this as what's called fission, which means we blow the black particles away from the white particles, and then fusion when they came back together. And this is identical to what happens in a nuclear bomb, fission bomb, and fission um, um, nuclear power. They divide the particles when they come back together. The fusion creates enormous amounts of heat. And that is what we did right here using light alone, nothing other than light. And we did it from a red pulse laser. Now, there's a lot of talk about, they don't even know whether light is a particle or a wave or what it is. Basically, they don't. They don't know what light is. Light, as I will show you, is a dipole. And here is light itself. Let's look at the, the whole panel of how this transpired. Right. This is a pulsed red laser. The reason all these little dots show up in the front here are because the magnetic field that the particle here, and it is a particle, has a magnetic field around it, so it forces all the other particles in the air to glow as they concuss with their magnetic fields, because every single particle there is has a magnetic field that can be excited and heated, and that's exactly what's happening here as that wave comes through the air. What does that particle look like? Well, this is the particle right here. That's exactly what it looks like. That is the particle. Alright, now, what does it consist of? It consists of a black and white ball here and a black and white ball there. Two bar magnets back to back. And they literally are bar magnets back to back. And that the whole shoot and match has a field like this around it, but it's already complete, so it doesn't want to glue to anything. These are bouncers. Light bounces because it's already complete. It has like two bar magnets, so it doesn't want to add another one, and it doesn't want to give one away. So they bounce. Now, if it impacts hard enough, we can literally split these particles in pieces. And that is the fission. Fission means to split. We can split those into fit particles, which that is called fission. And after we f do the fission, they come back together. Here they do the fission, and here they come back together is what's called fusion. And that is identical, identical to what a fusion, uh, a fission reactor does. And they're, they're dangerous because they can melt down. Um, because they're using gigantic particles. We're using light, so we, there's no chance of us melting down. We are dividing light and then fusing it back together again, creating the same kinds of energies and probably even more. And I think with a handheld device just like this, self-contained, nothing that you have to go and and um, plug into energy grid. You could carry these into disaster areas, put them down in a guy's house, plug a cord into it and the house is back up and running. And it could be this big to run a whole house or this big or smaller to run a car. No other, you'd, you'd never have to fuel it, do nothing at all whatsoever. All right, I'm going to leave it at this. I have a design I think that'll work and it can be held in a handheld device, something like this, and with controls on it and dials and so forth to control if it's 50 hertz or 60 hertz, because, you know, Europe uses 50, where you're going to have 120 volts AC, 240 volts AC, because that's what everybody runs on, basically, in the United States here. Or then you could also have DC voltages, all different styles. You click, 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 click right across this, as many as you want. Then you'd have to have a little display showing you how much amperage you're using and so forth and whatever whatever little details are in a display. That's it. And it sit on the face of something like this. And you'd, and it would be cheap. This would not be expensive. And it, it it's portable. You should be able to carry it around and run cars and run literally everything. Because they could be designed very tiny. It depends on if, it, if you need only little tiny lasers 
well, that's fine. Then you should be able to make a little tiny one. I mean, really tiny. And if you need big, heavy-duty stuff to really create some energy, well, obviously, you're going to need a little big, bigger, powerful lasers. But it, you're going to be able to refurbish that laser with its own electricity from the excess and then harvest what you need. You maybe need, need to store it or whatever, or you might be able to just use it on demand. This, this needs to be investigated. I don't have all the answers, but we should be looking at it. I would really love to engage with some of the people that are, are doing this research. and It's tough to break in, so I love you all. Thank you, Roger. Over and out.